Mistake number three, not doing your homework. Well, this is one of the grand faux pas that most investors make. They never research or do enough research. And what that means is they can end up buying the wrong property or they're just buying it in the wrong location or they pay too much or it could be a bit of a lemon. You know, there's so many things that can go wrong with actually not doing any research. So I guess to give you an example, uh, with a property in uh, Kalgoorlie that we bought some years ago, We've sold it now, but uh, it was our eighth property, and I thought, you hoo I'm a you know, guru property investor, I know what I'm doing, and I took shortcuts. Uh, the, the real estate agent that I was dealing with, he didn't have a property management arm to the business, he was just a sales agent. So he sold me the property, all right, and this particular property had a fantastic rental return, but it was a government lease. And, I, and, and uh, in regional areas, you can have leases, they call them GEHA leases, G-E-H-A, which is Government Employee Housing Association leases. And it's where government uh, departments rent properties for their staff. And so this was a above market rental return for the for uh, for what it was for the property, and and I and it was a 12 month or it was the end of a five year lease, so it had 12 months to go with an option of three years. I thought, great, they're going to take up the three years, no problem. Anyway, when it came to the end, uh, actually, I asked the agent. I said to the sales agent, what would this rent for in an open market? You know, it, just in case Giha don't actually renew the lease. And he goes, oh, Helen, you'll, you'll get, you know, because it was renting for 330 he says, you'll get 330 easy, plus some. I didn't do any more homework. I just took his word for it. I didn't validate it. I didn't do any more research about Giha. I didn't check to see whether they do renew their leases or whether the property we were buying was the type of property that they now want. Because, you know, mind you, this lease was nearly, you know, five years old. I didn't do any homework. And so when it came to the expiry of the lease, they said, we're not taking, we're not exercising the option. I thought, okay, no problem. I'll still get my 330, this'll be easy. Got a property manager in. She, uh, she went through the property, she rings me. Helen, you'll be really excited. I thought, great, I'm gonna get a, you know, a bit of a pay rise, a, an increase in rent. She said, the market's really buoyant right now. You know, property is turning over really easily. There's, there's lots of demand for rental and I can easily get you $260 a week. And I just went, you mean 360? And she said, no, 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 260. And, I, and my jaw dropped. We'd bought this property for $173,000. $260 made it a little bit negatively geared. And we went to regional WA for the reason that we were seeking out cash flow deals. So I bought it because it was earning $330, which is great cash flow. And, and that was back when the interest rates were a little bit lower too. But I thought, oh my God, it's just gone from something quite good to a bit of a lemon. Anyway, to, to cut a, shot, a long story short, we ended up selling it and made a profit. A small profit, but we offloaded that property fairly, you know, at the first opportunity. Because uh, I didn't do the research you know, I was devastated actually, and as a and as a result of that experience, now I always, always do detailed research. End up with a 40-page document on each property we look at buying. I just very thorough, cross my T's and dot my I's because I certainly don't want that sort of thing to happen again.